Okay, so we're getting ready to do insulation in uh, older, early 1900s uh, four square home in Meridian North Park. And this History. is basically how to blow in insulation with a plaster wall. This is plaster horsehair. This is very hard plaster. And a lot of these, well, most of these houses don't have any insulation, so your, your electric, electricity and heating bills can be really high. But, you know, if we blow in insulation, you know, we can alleviate that. So the basic idea is we've got to cut a hole in the wall and put the insulation in that cavity. So right here, I want to just show you kind of the tools that I use to, to do this. We've got our tape measure for measuring, a hand chisel that we'll use to clear out uh, the debris once we create the hole. We've got some pliers. You can use any kind. I like these particular kind of pliers. Pen. Marker. Or marker. And this is kind of uh, my template for cutting the hole which is actually just a piece of plaster. Now, the you know, for drywall, you can do a lot of easier things, but for horsehair plaster, the easiest way is to cut a square because this gives you more flexibility and since you're cutting a hole in it anyway, you might as well make it easy to deal with. We've got hammer. We've got an angle iron, and we've got our articulated saw, sawzall. Now, the reason I'm using an angle iron versus a drill is because this plaster is very hard, and if you use a drill, you know, you're going to go through the drill because it will actually wear down a, a drill. So this angle iron allows you to cut through the plaster really fast and it's more of an economy uh, deal. So you, it's, you can cut through that plaster and the reason I use this is these, this horsehair plaster is actually the first layer. Underneath that there are slats of wood, lace, lace uh, cedar planks of wood that uh, you've got to cut through that too. So you actually have to cut through plaster and wood to, to get through this. Because those legs hold in the plaster. Right, you know, it mushes in there, spreads out, so that's how the plaster holds to the wall. So and if you use a drill, what'll happen is not only will it, it you know, ultimately wear down your drill, but as you drill in there, you're not gonna be able to bite into the, the wood. And so what happens is, you're never able to make the hole. So this way, the angle iron, you basically get through the plaster, you use your chisel to pop that piece out, and that's exactly what this originally was. Just pop that out. Then you can cut through the wood with the sawzall, or the, the saw. So that kind of explains the process here. It's good to have, you know, uh, you can use a ladder or a stool, but we've got this little scaffolding here, so you, something like this would be good. I've got a coat hanger, and this is really useful when you're cutting the holes uh, to find and hit your studs. So this gives you a good idea of you know, where you need to be cutting and, and where you need to put your holes. And the measuring tape is for the 16 on Right, seven. and the measuring, this is for 16 on uh, for the studs, but depending on who built your house, who knows what it can be. Now this right here is what you want to get, okay? <laughs> you can go to Lowe's and they're going to have stuff. Don't make that mistake because I've made that mistake before. <laughs> go to a real tool rental place or if you're doing this, they sell these things on eBay and you want something that's this size or smaller because you can manage this. And this unit here works well for attics, 
but it's also really good for walls because a lot of people put this thing outside and you can do that too i like to keep it in the house because you got to kind of have somebody shepherd this thing and if you've got it outside you got to go back and forth and all that and it creates a lot of dust so if you have an alarm system that is going at particulates set it off you're going to want the to fire alarm uh for a fire alarm you're going to want to call and have them shut that off because when you do this you are going to have things floating around even though it doesn't seem like it especially when you use that angle iron when you use that angle iron it is going to kick up dust like crazy so so you need to call them and have them turn it off or you can also tape it up and that's what we did here so we went ahead and taped up the uh, the uh, smoke alarm so that way you know we also call but we did both so do both to make sure because you don't want the fire department coming out so this unit here you know it's, it's pretty easy to operate and this is just to show you what you'll be getting this is how you operate the blower and the uh, agitator that that chops up the insulation and here I've got my makeshift uh, nozzle which is just from a shop bag I just put it on there some places have a uh, smaller nozzles but for an older house you're gonna have to make the holes at least two and a half to three inches square Okay, you're gonna need that because you gotta twist and turn, you gotta get that stuff in there. So a little bitty nozzle is not gonna work for an old house. For you know a vinyl village house, <laughs> yeah, you can do that. For a house, a real house, you can't do that. You're gonna have to cut squares. Okay, you cut squares, it's easy, you can move on with your life. Okay. <laughs> so this is the, the the tool setup uh, and this really helped me a lot. I got to the point where I can cut uh, 25 holes in an hour and blow in that insulation in an hour and that's actually pretty good. So you know you can make really good time if you kind of use this this approach here. So now that we've gone over the tools and we've gone over kind of an overview of what we're going to do, the next section we'll actually go through, we'll cut a hole in the plaster and we'll chisel the plaster out along with the, uh, the lathe in the, behind it so you can see how that works and then we'll actually go through and blow in some insulation.